Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Well, what I would like to do is we're going to fit this horse <coughs> with the harness. And it's going to be a little big in places, and, and, um, but we'll fit it down as, as good as we can. The collar probably won't fit quite right, um, but she's not going to do any work. It's all about learning to put it on getting comfortable wearing it, and walking around with it, banging against her. And I can kind of go over the parts of the harness, at least the parts of what we call them in this area. I know that's a cultural thing, and um, different areas of the country have different names for the same pieces of equipment. This is a 24-inch collar. It's going to be too big for her, so I'm going to try it with a pad and see how that works. I like these vinyl pads. If you have a 24 inch collar, you should have a 25 inch pad, which seems to make no sense, but you're filling in that gap. The vinyl pads, the nice thing about them, when you're working a horse, they soften up big time and the sweat runs off. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. We've put her collar on a few times, but I suggest people do it this way. She, she can't jump back, she can't get out of the way, she can't get her head all turned around. Hey baby, come here. Come here. Now, some horses, you won't be able to get this up over their heads. And now I put the pad in there, that's all new. And it's a little tight, but, oh baby. That actually doesn't fit her terrible. <clears throat> you want the pad, you want the collar to come down on this slope of her shoulder it should sit nice on there because you know you think about a horse pushes a load it doesn't really pull it so she when she pushes into this it needs to be cushioned and not so big that it slops around and causes sores um, <clears throat> actually if you're going to air it's better to air on the collar that's a little bit small than one that's too big as long as it doesn't choke it's nice to have four three to four inches in this part of the collar. So when she does pull ahead, if it goes back a little bit, it doesn't choke her. See, now she's pulling back on purpose, but there's still plenty of room in there. And on your this side, you like to get one width of your hand in there. It should be snug, not, not tight, and not certainly not loose. And this fits her really good, which is surprising, because that's a 24-inch collar. So basically, she's wearing a 23. Now this, this harness was last used on one of Jacob's young horses, so it should come close to fitting her. And like I've shown before, you know, a lot of people come in, they slip the harness on real slow and easy, and she's a young horse. I understand all those things, but I'm not very big. So I swing my horses on, or harnesses on kind of like a saddle. And they just have to learn to get used to it. There's no pain in it easy. There's no pain in it. It's just everything's new. Now this is the second time she's ever had a harness thrown on her. The last time was probably six months ago when she was a baby. And if that's all the more discomfort it causes her, I'm okay with it and I think she's okay with it. The hames are the second most important part of the harness because <clears throat> they sit on the collar and that's what transfers her power to the load. So it's important that it all starts here with a line of draft. You're on the, on the center part, point of her shoulder, and the tug then should go down through and like an imaginary line down through her hock. But the other thing you want to make sure you do is they need to be centered, uh, the balls, whatever, equal. <clears throat> and this strap needs to be tight. You do not want the um, horse to be able to pull the hames off the collar. 
So there's a groove that they sit in, that helps a ton, but keeping this tight is important. Because it's a side backer, we have these things, we call them baby yokes. Okay. And that, then this will clip into your neck yoke on the tongue. Okay, this part of the harness back here is called the britchin. And this is what stops. These are your brakes. So it doesn't matter if it's a sidebacker harness or Yankee britching harness. This is where when the load stops, they're holding the load with their bottom. So you don't want it too high because it can slip up and you don't want it too low where it can actually take their feet out from under them. You want to make sure that when you adjust your britching, it's parallel with the floor. And this is a three strap britching harness. Some only have two. Um, I'm not sure that the third strap does anything more than eye appeal. But the idea is you'll probably have one here where your trace carrier goes and one here for sure in the back. That, so you want that to be balanced and parallel with the floor. And this is a pretty good height. It could go up maybe one hole. So I think maybe we will take it up one, one hole just to see if that does make a difference or not. <clears throat> It's a little bit of a nuisance, but I can tell you the bioplastic harness is easier to adjust than the leather. And a trick for all of them, especially if you have a Conway, I'll share with in a little while. A Conway is, is a different kind of a buckle. Here's one right here. And they're odd shaped looking things. And if you've ever taken them off a harness, you, you scratch your head a lot trying to figure out how to put them back on. But they do work really well. But the key is, when you get it in the hole you want, if you take a pair of pliers and squeeze the back of the Conway and on that tongue thing there, that will stay in place. I keep a little pair of channel lock, uh, vice grip, you know, channel locks, and just smoosh that down, pliers, anything. Because my thumbs aren't as strong as they once were, but that helps it stay in really good. <clears throat> Okay, back to the rich end. Okay. I'm purposely throwing these chains on the ground and everything just for her to listen to. It's just a, anything you can do to make a little extra noise, even if it's not on purpose, um, is less likely to scare her at another time. And the tugs are something she's going to step on, step over, rattle all of her life. So the sooner you get her used to hearing it rattle, the better, the better. That's why we take the babies with their moms and we get them listening to the harness and the hames, the banging of the double trees. I use steel double trees. They bang on the tongue. <clears throat> All that needs to know that, okay, that's just normal noise. It's nothing to be afraid of. <clears throat> and pretty soon they associate with any noise. Okay, if you're there, it's all okay. It, it's just part of life. And that's a good place to be with your animals. <clears throat> Especially with the horses. <clears throat> that, <clears throat> this is just a tug carrier. It's kind of a convenience thing. Most harnesses have some sort like this. Um, getting back to what you talked about earlier, if all you had was the <clears throat> collar, the hames, some sort of back pad to keep keep the tug following the line of draft that we talked about. So when you adjust your belly band, it also helps make this go just like this and back to the implement. That's what you shoot for. You don't hit it every single time and it depends on what load, how important that is. I say it's 99% of the time it's very important, but there are times some wagons, you know, carriages, you're gonna be up here with the tug but they're not moving much weight, like if you're pulling a logs or plowing <clears throat> some more heavier work. And I do like how that britching fits better up here. So we're gonna do the same thing on this side. <clears throat> we'll adjust this up. The top of the britching, um, <clears throat> there's a, this piece here, this, this is called the spider. And what that does, these, these straps, <clears throat> oh baby, you kind of determine the length of your horse. And they also help hold your britching in place. 
So we will adjust them too because it's letting it come back just a little too much. So we, we may try one hole. She's, she's Suffolk, of course, but she's short coupled. So you may have to be more cognizant of this. Um, looks like we might already be in the last hole. So we'll see once we get it completely adjusted. The other thing that makes a difference is once you hook to an implement and everything comes tight, you can make final adjustments there. There's a little strap here. <clears throat> we call these lazy straps, and these are our own. There's, it's just a little strap that you can adjust the side, uh, for length. <clears throat> we use them when we we're going bit to bit on the horses, but this was used to keep her tied into another horse. So it's just a temporary thing we do when they're young, and hopefully they, uh, they grow out of it. And some horses, like when you step over the tongue, they want to swing their butt really wide and not stay together with the other horse. So it's sort of a training aid, too. <clears throat> I like it because it keeps them with, not only with the horse, but kind of tied to it. And if you're working with one of these other horses, that's a huge anchor. So not only if she gets scared and wants to run off, she's not dragging them guys anywhere. She has to do what they do. Okay, the belly band <clears throat> is not like a cinch on a saddle. It should be a little bit loose. Most of its job is to hold the back pad in place and to help with that, <clears throat> as we talked about on the other side, with that line of draft. So if you notice, the, tug, the trace carrier is about in the right spot. Here I'm coming through the hawk, and it's, that's about as good as you can get it for now. I think, like I said, we're going to have to probably poke a new hole in here. And to poke a hole in a leather harness, you can use a leather punch, obviously. But that doesn't work as good on these. So what I do, I take a nail and heat it red hot with a torch, just a little burns matic torch. Measure off here where I want it, and then it'll just poke right through. It just melts its way through. So it cauterizes and everything as it goes through, makes a nice hole. And does a good job. Or if you try with your jackknife or something like that, you're just asking for problems. And this is another thing. This is our overcheck. And um, as far as checking up horses, there's a lot of people who totally disagree. I check them up just enough so that two things. Number one, they can't eat. And number two, if a horse can get his head way down and get his neck arched and get a hold of the bit, you will not be able to stop that horse. <clears throat> Okay, this, I'm going to explain how the side backer works. Now, the side backer is definitely too long. Um, you, it needs to be, <clears throat> she's going to be hooked to the wagon, something like this, so that the neck yoke is pulling back against the tongue stop. So she'll want, you want it a little bit, <clears throat> a little bit of, you know, motion in here, but you don't want her to have to be pushing and pulling the wagon at the same time. Uh, I don't want to say that pulling and stopping the wagon at the same time. So if you have this strap too tight, every time she takes a step, it's transferring, oh, it's on, stop, go, stop, go. So if you hitch him too tight, it'll do the same thing. But in this case, she's short enough that this has to be adjusted out. And these are Conways, and they're made to slide. These, um, these little protectors here are kind of a nuisance to get through, but I'll do the best I can. I'm going to go two holes and see what that looks like. That, I'm going to do the other side, just what I did. But as you can see, see how when now the brishin, it's all transferred back. Yeah. <clears throat> and it would be the same thing, same idea if you had quarter straps and the breast strap that goes under here for our Yankee britchin. You would do the same thing. You'd pull on your, your well, there would be a big snap here. You'd pull on that snap. That's what you want to see. Um, I don't use a crouper. I, I used to a long time ago. The crouper hooks in here and goes down and underneath her tail. Um, <clears throat> I just got away from it. I, originally, I thought that they helped hold the harness in place and everything. And uh, I'm not convinced they do anymore. I think it's more to do with um, if the harness fits correctly, and it's size for the horse, I think that's, you don't really need it. Now, some guys, you know, the, the croupers here, up to the spider, 
and your overcheck goes from the spider. So some guys think that that helps hold that. Well, geez, if you have to have that much tension on the horse's mouth, I, I think there's other problems there. Not, it's not a harness problem. It's a, it could be a training problem or, or just a horse attitude problem. I'm not sure. Another thing I should have mentioned, these <clears throat> right here on, the, on your hames, all of them have these three notches. These hames are for 24, 25, 26 inch collars. And as you, as the horse grows and the collar gets bigger or not, you want to have the, this adjusted for the collar you're using. Well, I'm pretty, <clears throat> pretty satisfied with her today. I think she did a good job. I'm going to try one more thing. We're going to put her bridle on and adjust it. <clears throat> and I'll leave her halter on for now. But <clears throat> I'm one of those guys that takes the halters off when I bridle my horses. Okay, I'm going to try and talk about the parts of a bridle. <clears throat> I use blind bridles, blinders in them. There's a lot of research and a lot of current feeling that you don't need blinders on a horse. <clears throat> and I'm not going to argue that one way or the other because I have no experience not using one. However, I will say I think it's a great idea if you start a young horse without them and she gets used to it and isn't afraid. It's probably a good thing. I never have. Um, I'm old and <laughs> set in my ways, I guess, for lack of a better word. So I don't know that I would try it because that would mean I'd have to go buy all new bridles. And then if it didn't work, I have a expense for nothing. But in any case, if I was riding the horse, I would want her an open bridle. Why? Because I want her to see what's coming. Why does that change when we put a harness on them? I can't answer that question. That's why I have mixed emotions about it. But I applaud the guys that do it, especially uh, in the woods, because I think they could see more overhead hazards, and I don't care that they see behind them. It's just me. I want them to know I'm behind them. So as far as the bridle, <clears throat> like I said, parts of a bridle are and I'm not going to be the best person to tell you, but these are the blinders. This little thing is for decoration. I think it also helps hide a lot of stars on horses' heads so they all match. Um, and a lot of it is just decoration. This does have function. It's also decoration, but it keeps the brow band in place and provides where your throat latch hooks under. So that helps keep the bridle up on the horse. And the horse will rub a bridle off. So... When you put the throat latch on, it's one of those things where you got to use common sense. It needs to be tight enough to keep it on their head and not so tight to rub it off, uh, not so loose to rub it off, but not so tight that it chokes them. Um, I generally um, put my thumb in their mouth when I, I start it up like this. I take hold a bit, I work my thumb right here, hold it, and put it in gently. You don't want to be banging her teeth. Hey, now this little horse just had her wolf teeth removed about a month ago. You want the bit up in their mouth, but you don't want it uncomfortable. But at the same time, if it's too loose, they'll get their tongue over the top of it. And you absolutely don't want that. She's, I think this is the first time ever her wearing a bit in her mouth. So <clears throat> she's going to play with it and try to figure out what's going on and what is that all about? <clears throat> and this, if it was a straight bit, I'd be pretty close, but because it's a snapple, she's got a lot of room in here. Hey, sis. Hey, hey. Come up here a minute. Come up here a minute. I want to see. See how it kind of hangs down? Yep. So it's still a little bit too much. And we, we may actually have to switch her to a straight bit. I don't think so. I think I can get it by going up here. This just crowds this pretty hard. But we'll see. It's nice when you have a wrinkle in the corner of their mouth. I know that sounds funny, but I don't know if I'm going to get that or not. If, if she, I mean, she's playing with it now, so it's a little harder to adjust it. And I, I may have to adjust it more. But the nice thing about this is it's in there, it's loose, and yet it's still going to be effective. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> as far as the overcheck goes... Come here, sis. You want to make sure, see how it's twisted on the bottom part of the bit? Yep. Well, that's one of the things you want to watch for. This should be up here. And check both sides, because I can feel it's the other side the same way. It's all right, sis. Right yeah. Like yes, exactly. 
And I'm thinking that the do this for a minute. Now you can see that is not uncomfortable on her. It barely tightened up. But it's not gonna let her eat, reach the ground to eat grass. This the throat latch. Again, she's young, so I'll put it kind of tight. It's under a jawbone, but there's still room for she's not gonna be choked or anything. So I would start there and see what she does. And I really think when I take this off, I'm going to take up one more hole because then that should put me <laughs> close to the wrinkle. Now, you see what she's doing? This is not because she's uncomfortable. It's because she doesn't know what in the world is in her mouth. And so she's going to slobber and fuss and fight. And this is why I like to put it on them, let them get used to it here in the barn. <clears throat> it's all right, sis. Um, lastly... We would use single lines on her. These oh, are still these are, beta, oh, okay. but they're one inch. Okay. They're heavy like leather. But they look like leather. And they, even when they're wet, they have a lot of... And they feel like leather. They're very, they're very pliable. Yes. Um, and single lines are fairly long. Um, what I don't have on this harness right now is it's nice to have a ring like this Let's just I'll do one side back here And you would put the line through that ring through the hame ring and then to the bit Now <clears throat> This is how I like to put mine on the inside so the dog of the snap is on the inside because if she rubs a horse next to her, it's less likely to get hooked on that other horse somewhere. That doesn't mean it doesn't happen. And it's probably be a good practice to take black tape and tape over it when you're viewing youngsters. It stops some of that. Because we've had all kinds of crazy things. We've actually had a horse got his bridle hooked into this. Um, so when they're older horses, you kind of say, whoa, and they'll stand there. But <laughs> things like that happen things go sideways in a hurry, so it's nice to have an extra person. So when we're doing the young horses, usually Jake and I do it together, or one of my friends and I do it together, that helps. But what this does, it helps keep the tongue up here, or, I'm sorry, the line up here. And you can adjust it however you want it. Um, but when it's when, without this, well then your lines drop down. So if you're you know, you got them in your hand and you're harnessing up. All she's got to do is step sideways. Now she's over top your line. The, the good thing is, without that, you can hold your lines down here when you're driving her to kind of help keep her straight. We found that that's not an issue with very many horses, and it just works a lot nicer to use this uh, carrier up here. Some lines will be attached to the bit with a buckle. Yes. Um, and again, that's not... They used to all buckle. I mean, people would take the snaps off and buckle them on there. In the woods, when I worked in the woods every day, um, I taped mine every single day. Electrical tape is cheap. I would tape that. I would tape my um, whipple tree the, on the single tree, whatever. I'd put the whatever, whatever link, and then I'd do that too so it wouldn't come unhooked. That's the last thing you want. You're in a heavy, bad spot in a heavy log. You ask your horses to go ahead, one of them's got a tug loose. Oh, geez. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.